Thank you, John and Kim. Good morning and welcome to worship on this fifth Sunday of Easter as we continue celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The tomb is empty. Alleluia. And welcome to Holy Humor Sunday. Our radio broadcast is given today to the glory of God and in honor of the marriage yesterday of Casey Gartland and Jason Lofquist by Casey's parents, Diane and Doug Gartland. So thank you to Diane and Doug. It was an absolutely lovely day for an outdoor wedding, and we congratulate Casey and Jason and wish them many years of happiness. Our altar flowers are given this Sunday to the glory of God. We extend our sympathies to many families this morning. Joyce Creighton, mother of Ann and Dennis Severinsen, died on Tuesday, and her funeral will be held tomorrow at First Lutheran in Gladstone. Muriel Brunchen's grandmother of Jesse and Paul Nelson, died on Tuesday, and her services were held yesterday at Skradsky Funeral Home. John McDonough, brother of Chris and Rick Anderson, was laid to rest on Friday at Bark River Cemetery. Jane Pryle, friend of Ruthie Vinette and other Bethany members, died on May 4th, and her services uh, were held at St. Anne's Church this past Monday. Dan Allen, brother-in-law of Dennis and Ann Severinsen, died on May 1st, and his services were held on May 7th at All Saints in Gladstone. And Judith Clissell, sister-in-law of Dave and Elaine Clissell, died on April 30th. Her services will be held on May 19th in Lindstrom, Minnesota. Please keep the Creighton, Brunchens, McDonough, Pryle, Allen and Clissell families in prayer. We want to wish a very happy birthday to three Bethany members. Dolores Hansen will turn 90 years old on Tuesday, May 17th. Arlene Paulson will turn 93 on Thursday, May 19th. And Julie Nicious's birthday is this coming Friday, the 20th. So happy birthday to Dee, Arlene, and Julie. Have a wonderful birthday and a great year to come. This past week was Synod Assembly Week, and we thank everyone who participated in online classes and online worship on Friday evening. Yesterday, our conference met in person at First Lutheran in Gladstone, and I want to thank those who provided wonderful treats for the morning, Claire Atwood, 
Karen Caswell, Sue Clifton, and Elaine Peterson. They were very much appreciated by the delegates who gathered for the business meeting and worship that we had yesterday. Um, just a couple of quick notes. The Worship and Music Committee is reorganizing. So if any of you would like to be involved in choosing hymns and assisting with worship-related tasks, just let Kelly in the office know. And a reminder to church council members that you are meeting with Bishop Finnegan on Tuesday night at 6.30 in the chapel. We noticed at first service uh, this morning that the prayers of intercession did not change out this week. There are some Mother's Day references. So after the creed, when Carol reads the prayers, you won't be able to follow along. So just listen to her carefully and sorry about that. I want to thank you, members and guests who are joining us in person and online this morning. We appreciate those who are helping out with today's worship service, our musicians, John Beck and Kim Beck, Kyra Beck, who is running our live stream, Carol Beck, who is our assisting minister and communion assistant, and Rodney Spence, our usher. My name is Pastor Terry Frankenstein, and we welcome you to worship. Let us begin with our thanksgiving for baptism. Please stand as you're comfortable. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our gathering hymn is We Are Called. Oh 
and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. O Lord God, you teach us that without love our actions gain nothing. Pour into our hearts your most excellent gift of love that made alive by your Spirit we may know goodness and peace through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Acts. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to the uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. 
Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be, sla be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read responsibly from Psalm 148. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise the Lord, all you angels. Sing praise, all you hosts of heaven. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Sing praise, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord, heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord who commanded, and they were created. Who made them stand fast forever and ever, giving them a law that shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind doing God's will. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name only is exalted, whose splendor is over earth and heaven. The Lord has raised up strength for the people and praise for all faithful servants the children of Israel, a people who are near the Lord. Hallelujah. A reading from Revelation. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Caleb, are you up for a one-on-one? -on -one? Come on up. just sit here. So it's Holy Humor Sunday. I'm going to tell jokes today. So I've got some questions for you. They all have to do with Noah's Ark, so you need to think carefully about your answers, okay? All right. Oops. So what did Noah say as he was loading the ark? What did he say? Now I heard everything. <laughs> what animal 
could Noah not trust? Well, snake's a good guess. But here's the answer that I have. The cheetah. Couldn't trust the cheetah. You can try these on your friends later. Okay. Why couldn't they play cards on the ark? There was no cards at the time, for sure, but Noah was sitting on the deck. <laughs> okay, I just have a few more. Let's see. Who designed Noah's ark? God. God gave the gifts to the architect. <laughs> you hearing the groans out there? <laughs> These are pretty bad. Okay, two more. Why couldn't Noah catch many fish? But yeah, there was a flood, and he only had how many worms? He only had two worms, so he couldn't catch very many. All right. Where was Noah when the lights went out? On the deck in the dark. Get it? Dark. <laughs> dark. <laughs> Let's fold our hands and bow our heads and pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the gifts of fun and laughter. Help us to find joy all around us and encourage us to smile. In Jesus' name, amen. You're a good sport, Caleb. You can take two suckers today, okay? <laughs> Will you please stand as you're comfortable for our gospel acclamation, which we'll speak together. Alleluia. Everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. When he had gone out, Jesus said, now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I bring you grace and peace and mercy from God, our Creator, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Holy Humor Sunday isn't on any official liturgical calendar, but there is history behind it. Sometimes this Sunday is called Bright Sunday or Laughter Sunday. I guess that way back in the 1400s, churches in Bavaria would celebrate it as the Easter laugh with priests telling jokes or funny stories to try to get people to laugh. This was a way to celebrate God's joke on Satan by raising Jesus from the dead. Pope Clement X did outlaw the Easter laugh in the 1600s, so part of me feels a little bit guilty about Holy Humor Sunday, but ah, it's okay. Y'all know you can't say you weren't warned, as I've been mentioning it for a few weeks now. After Easter, as we celebrate God's joke on Satan for seven weeks, and today on the fifth Sunday of Easter, we're letting down our guard a little bit and having some fun, laughing and smiling. They are gifts from God for which to be thankful. They are a way to celebrate the resurrection, to make us aware of new hope and new life in our lives. So, here goes. 
A kindergarten teacher was walking around observing her classroom of children as they were drawing pictures. She got to one girl who was working very diligently and asked her what she was drawing. The girl replied, I'm drawing God. The teacher paused and said, but no one knows what God looks like. Without looking up, the little girl said, they will in a minute. <laughs> there are lots of pearly gate jokes. An 85-year-old couple, having been married almost 60 years, die in a car crash. They had been in good health for the last 10 years, mainly due to the wife's interest in health food. When they reached the pearly gates, St. Peter took them to their mansion, which was decked out with a beautiful kitchen and master bath suite with jacuzzi. As they oohed and aahed, the old man asked Peter how much all this was going to cost. It's free, Peter replied. Remember, this is heaven. Next, they went out back to see the championship golf course the home backed up to. They would have golfing privileges every day, and each week the course changed to a new one representing the great golf courses on earth. The old man asked, what are the greens fees? This is heaven, St. Peter replied. You play for free. Next, they went to the clubhouse and saw the lavish buffet lunch with the cuisines of the world laid out. How much to eat, asked the old man. Don't you understand yet? This is heaven. It's free. Well, where are the low fat and low cholesterol foods, the old man asked. That's the best part. You can eat as much as you like of whatever you like, and you never get fat, and you never get sick. This is heaven. The old man looked at his wife and said, You and your stupid bran muffins? I could have been here 10 years ago. <laughs> a good Christian engineer died and was erroneously sent to hell. Once there, he went to work reorganizing everything. He installed air conditioning, cooling jets, refrigeration, the works. Meantime, up in heaven, the snafu was discovered and God sent an angry message down to hell. I request the immediate return of the engineer you have there. He belongs with us. No way, replied the devil. Here he came, here he stays. If you do not comply instantly, I will sue you, exclaimed God. And where are you going to find a lawyer up here, asked the devil. <laughs> where is Ralph today? <laughs> Three nurses appeared before St. Peter at the pearly gates. St. Peter said to the first, tell me what you did on earth. Said she, I was a birthing room nurse. I helped bring hundreds of precious babies into the world. Enter, said Peter. Then he turned to the second, and how about you, he asked. She replied, I was a trauma unit nurse. I helped save hundreds of lives of people involved in terrible accidents. Enter, cried St. Peter, and turned to the third. I worked for an HMO, she admitted. Over the years, I saved my company hundreds of thousands of dollars by refusing extended care to people who were trying to bilk the system. You may enter said St. Peter. You really mean it? asked the nurse incredulously. Yes, replied St. Peter. You've been pre-approved for three days. <laughs> okay, here's the last pearly gate joke. A man died one day and found himself waiting in the long line of judgment. As he stood there, he noticed that some souls were allowed to march right through the pearly gates into heaven. Others, though, were led over to Satan, who threw them into the burning pit. But every so often, instead of hurling a poor soul into the fire, Satan would toss them off to one side into a pile. After watching Satan do this several times, the fellow's curiosity got the best of him. So he strolled over to ask Satan what he was doing. Excuse me, Prince of Darkness? 
I'm waiting in line for judgment, but I couldn't help wondering, why are you tossing those people aside instead of flinging them into the fires of hell with the others? Ah, those, Satan said with a groan. They're all youpers. They're still too cold and wet to burn. <laughs> Father O'Malley answers the phone. Hello, is this Father O'Malley? It is. This is the IRS. Can you help us? I'll try. Do you know a Ted Houlihan? I do. Is he a member of your congregation? He is. Did he donate $10,000 to the church? He will. <laughs> Lena passed away and Oli called 911. The 911 operator told Oli that she would send someone out right away. Where do you live, asked the operator. Oli answered, at the end of Eucalyptus Drive, can you spell that for me, the operator asked. There was a long pause, and finally Oli said, how about if I drag her over to Oak Street and you can pick her up there? <laughs> Muldoon lived alone in the Irish countryside with only a pet dog for company. The dog got old and died. So Muldoon went to the parish priest and asked, Father, me dog is dead. Could you be saying a mass for the poor creature? Father Patrick replied, I'm afraid not. We cannot have funeral services for an animal. But, he said, there are some Lutherans up the hill, and there's no knowing what they believe. Maybe they'll do something for the dog. Muldoon said, thank you, Father. I'll go right away. By the way, do you think $5,000 is enough to donate to the Lutherans for the service? Father Patrick exclaimed, Sweet Mary, Mother of Jesus, why did you not tell me the dog was Catholic? <laughs> a burglar broke into a house one night. He shined his flashlight around, looking into drawers, trying to find valuables, and when he found a diamond necklace, he started to place it in his sack when he heard a strange, somewhat disembodied voice come out of the dark saying, Jesus is watching you. He nearly jumped out of his skin, turned his flashlight off, and froze. When he heard nothing more, he shook his head, figuring he must be going crazy. Turned his light back on, looking for more valuables. When he found a nice gold watch, he started to put it in his bag, and again, Clear as a bell, he heard, Jesus is watching you. He shined his light all around the room and finally noticed in the corner of the room a cage with a parrot inside. Did you say that, he hissed at the parrot. The parrot said, I'm just trying to warn you. Warn me, huh? Who do you think you are? Moses, replied the bird. Moses, the burglar laughed. What kind of people would name a bird Moses? The parrot said, the same kind of people that would name a Rottweiler Jesus. <laughs> it was Saturday night. The minister had worked all week on a sermon, but still had nothing. Plus, he was just sick of having to come up with something every week. He just wanted a week off. He didn't want to be in church the next day. Finally, he decided to heck with it. He called the council president, said he had come down with a terrible stomach flu, so he couldn't possibly do the service the next day. They'd just have to have a hymn sing or something. He got off the phone and thought, good, let them see how they do it without me. He was a pretty good golfer. So the next morning, he got up early and drove to a golf course 100 miles away where he was pretty sure no one would recognize him so he could spend a quiet day on the links. Meanwhile, up in heaven, the angels were watching all this and talking amongst themselves until one said to Jesus, are you going to let him get away with that? Jesus said, no, I'm not. The angels watched as the minister teed off on the first hole and suddenly 
The wind picked up and blew the ball further than he'd ever hit it before, so it landed just short of the green, bounced a couple of times, and then rolled straight into the hole. It was a 420-yard hole-in-one, by far the best shot the minister had ever made. The angels were bewildered. They looked at Jesus, and one of them said, why did you do that? Jesus smiled and replied, who's he going to tell? <laughs> Reverend Billy Graham told of a time early in his ministry when he arrived in a small town to preach a sermon. Wanting to mail a letter, he asked a young boy where the post office was. When the boy had told him, Dr. Graham thanked him and said, if you come to church this evening, you can hear me telling everyone how to get to heaven. I don't think I'll be there, the boy said. You don't even know your way to the post office. <laughs> A minister wound up the service one morning by saying, next Sunday I'm going to preach on the subject of liars. And in this connection, as a preparation for my sermon, I'd like you all to read the 17th chapter of Mark. On the following Sunday, the preacher rose to begin and said, Now then, all of you who have done as I requested and have read the 17th chapter of Mark, now please raise your hand. And nearly every hand in the congregation went up. Then the preacher said, You are the very people I want to talk to. There is no 17th chapter of Mark. <laughs> The worship service was just beginning. The opening hymn was already playing when a stranger entered the church, marched straight down the center aisle, and sat himself in the very first pew. Wow, thought the pastor, that doesn't happen very often. I wish all my parishioners were that enthusiastic. And he went on with the service. At the end of the worship, the pastor was greeting the parishioners as they left. Since the stranger came so late and sat at the very front, he was one of the last ones out. Welcome. It is good to have you with us this morning, says the pastor. Are you new to this area and looking for a church home? No, not really, he said. Well, then, what brings you here today? Actually, this is a professional visit, replied the stranger. A professional visit, said the pastor. Are you a clergy person? No, the man said, I'm a bus driver. What I'm trying to do is figure out how you get everyone to sit in the back. <laughs> Along the same lines, how many Lutherans does it take to screw in a light bulb? I don't know, but I do know that if it's in the front row, it'll never get fixed. <laughs> One more pearly gate story. A man died and approached the pearly gates. St. Peter told him heaven was getting crowded, so he had to test people with the point system. If he got to 100 points, he could enter. The man told Peter that he gave to the poor. Peter marked him down for three points. The man thought again, then said, I tithe. Peter added one point. The man, desperately searching his memory, finally said that, I never cuss. Peter added, half a point. By now, the man got very frustrated and said that at this rate, he could only get in by the grace of God. Peter replied, come on in. Always the surprise, God's grace. Yet in scripture, there is nothing more unexpected than our Messiah, Jesus Christ, executed on a cross, only to rise from the grave three days later. It's a joke on a cosmic scale, a practical joke on death, hell, sin, and suffering that leaves the power of darkness defeated. The story of Easter is the story of God's grace, the grace that gives us hope, that allows us to live and to laugh. And I think God is just fine with that. Amen. Today we've got a 
hymn of the day with eight verses. I know that my Redeemer lives, so I invite you to sing any four verses in any order, so that way, as good Lutherans, we will sing all eight verses. Son, that wasn't even part of it. Will you please stand as you're comfortable as we profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Loving God, lead us to follow your spirit rather than our own prejudices or desires as the church cares for one another. Open us to perceive your gifts in those we least expect. 
God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Inspire us to praise you through the beauty and the majesty of the natural world around us. Urge us toward more deliberate care of your world you have made. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Humble the rulers of nations before your splendor. Direct them to the people <clears throat> excuse me, who need their attention most and turn them from the temptation to hoard wealth or power. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hasten to dwell among those who are in pain or distress, especially Lois Pinar, Ken Jusla, Jean Barasa, Don Hopkins, Donald Wellen, Judy Davenport, Jill Baum, Mary Eastman, David Wilson Jr., John Pinar, Dorothy Erickson, Judy Pepin, Jean Peterson, Bob Polowski, Alfred Dawson, Kent Anderson, and those we name before you now, either aloud or in this moment of silence. As Christ enters our deepest suffering, remain with those experiencing despair and great need. God, in your mercy. Place holy love at the center of our relationships and communities. By your love, heal us, convict us, and renew us. Bring an end to racism in our churches and community. Especially today, we pray for the community of Brooklyn, New York, mourning the death and wounding of innocent people. Let everyone know your goodness by the love we show one another. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us a place in the diverse company of your beloved saints. Joyce Creton, Muriel Brunchens, John McDonough, Judith Glassell, Dan Allen, and Jane Pryor. Teach us the value of each person's identity and bless us with a shared identity as your children, kindred of Christ. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the sign of peace with one another.
Jad and Kim, will you please stand for our offertory response? Together we say, let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and the dreams of all. Unite them with the prayers we offer now. Grace our table with your presence and give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body, that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Holy Communion is served at the altar rail. Rodney will release uh, Rose by coming down the aisle, starting on this side and uh, finishing on this side. We have gluten-free wafers, regular wafers, and in the trays um, we'll have wine, which is darker colored along the outer edges, and then grape juice in the center. So the risen Christ dwells with us here, all who are hungry, all who are thirsty. Um,
As you're comfortable, please stand. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. And receive this blessing. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn is a little different version of Joy to the World.